banking on a better customer experience, uh, showcasing DocuSign and Salesforce for financial services. Today's presenters will be myself, as, as along with Andrew Geis, who is the Director of Product Marketing for Financial Services and Insurance at DocuSign. Uh, Andrew has some deep experience at working in the financial services area with DocuSign and implement, implementing it there. And I work for a company called Traction On Demand. And before we go into that, uh, let's just do a brief overview of what today's agenda is. Uh, we'll be doing an introduction to Traction and who we are and why you joined us today for a, a webinar on financial services and DocuSign and Salesforce. And then we'll talk a bit, I'll hand it over to Andrew who can talk a bit about DocuSign for financial services. And then we'll be talking a bit about enhancing the power of DocuSign uh, with Salesforce and, and vice versa. So going into a customer use case uh, with Thinking Capital, which is a lending service here in, uh, here in Canada, up, uh, based in Montreal. So Traction On Demand is a Salesforce implementation partner. We are based out of Vancouver, BC, with offices in Montreal and, and across, and people on the ground across North America. We've been developing on the platform for about nine years, uh, and we've completed about 1,800 projects with about 450 unique customers. We are the largest dedicated Salesforce partner in Canada and uh, proud to be one of DocuSign's top partners as well. Looking a bit at uh, what we do and, and what makes us different is, as I said, we, were, we, are one of, we were one of DocuSign's top three finalists for Partner of the Year this year. And a couple points of pride here is that we were a top 10 best place to work in Canada both last year and this year, as well as we are a certified B Corporation meaning that we consider the people on the planet on par with profit. Um, and in all of our engagements and everything like that, we always tend to do fixed fee whenever possible to make the most for, of the engagement for both ourselves and for our clients. Our standard uh, NASCAR slide here, and you'll notice that we, we don't really specify one industry or, or vertical or another, specifically with today being a financial services focused webinar, but we've done this on purpose. And while we maintain a strong understanding of each industry uh, and the important differences and requirements for each, we take pride in our ability to solution cross industry and, and build new solutions that maybe haven't been thought of yet in, in each of those different verticals. So after that brief overview, I'm gonna hand it over to Andrew to talk to you a bit more about um, DocuSign for Salesforce and for the financial services firm. Hey everybody, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Uh, for those of you who, who uh, aren't intimately familiar with DocuSign, uh, we are in the digital transaction management business. In fact, we are the, the global leader in digital transaction management. But what most people don't know is that we actually started electronic signatures back in 2003. So we've been in, in the business for quite quite a while. We are uh, a global company doing digital transaction management around the world. In fact, people have DocuSigned in 188 countries. We're in 43 languages and have offices around the world. In fact, it seems like we're opening up a new office almost every, every, every single month. We have 50 million users, over 100,000 paying customers, and 50,000 people are joining uh, what we call the Global Trust Network every every single day. People uh, have invested in DocuSign typically because, or one of the most common reasons anyway, is because they're trying to solve a paper problem. So sales contracts, loan applications, new account openings. When uh, when it comes to the moment of truth, as we like to say, they're they're switching to paper and that breaks down the process. Of course, people have invested uh, a lot of money, or businesses have invested on a lot of money in the systems that they use, the ER, their ERP systems, their CRM systems, and so on and so forth. Uh, but again, when it comes time to talk to the different constituents, their, their consumers, their customers, their employees, it often breaks down and moves to, to email, to fax, to, to, to paper, to overnighting. And what DocuSign aims to do, or what we actually do, is, is, is keep things fully digital so that your systems can talk to the people and then back to the systems in a way that's seamless and, and makes a process, any process, pretty much fully, uh, fully digital. 
So for financial services, when you think about the different the different applications, the the row here in the blue are the kind of the back office functions, and and here we work with procurement organizations to do, to do purchase orders. For human resources, we can we can work with HR organizations for the full life cycle of a an employee or a candidate, which is a big I think a big advantage in the the war for talent. Uh, but more importantly, where we where we typically find the most value for our customers are are actually in their customer facing uh, functions. So, for lending, when you're doing consumer or commercial loan applications, when you're doing new account openings, uh, transfer of assets, any sort of legal and compliance work with either your internal constituents or your customers and uh, customers and consumers. It's a a a number of different applications that you can do within financial services. And for us, we're doing that with financial services customers uh, across uh, across the industry. Just to steal Kevin's phrase, this is our, our NASCAR slide, in this case, uh, financial services specific, working with many of the top wealth management firms and banks and, and most of the credit unions across um, across the country. It's actually, financial services is actually one of our most important industries so it is, it is one of the industries that we invest a, a ton of resources in, both from a, a dedicated sales force uh, all the way, all the way uh, down into marketing and all of the support functions. So it's a, a very, very important industry for us. Uh, of course, as, as Kevin alluded to earlier in, the, in uh, his introduction, we're here today to talk more specifically about the partnership between DocuSign and Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce has been a long-standing relationship for uh, for us in a very powerful relationship because the the joint solution uh, not only is it going to be deployed in a number of different ways, but the more importantly the the value that people get from deploying the joint solution is is quite substantial. So if you talk about sales deals, you're able to close deals quite a bit more quickly, able to cut operating costs uh, substantially. Here we've got an average of $19 per document, which of course varies a little bit based on the type of document that you're talking about. It enables your workforce to be mobile. And then for, for companies who are using DocuSign after they've invested in CRM, they're actually increasing or maximizing maximizing that investment. So you see a big uptick in usage of the CRM solution when they're investing in, in DocuSign. Thanks, Drew. And, and, and as Drew mentioned, um, as an implementer of both DocuSign and Salesforce uh, at Traction, we're, we're seeing a lot more uh, unique use cases developed that look past typically the sales cloud and, and into the new areas of the cloud like service, uh, like communities and HR and onboarding and in the new and, and different um, industries and verticals as well. And that's why we tend to implement DocuSign over others kind of similar solutions it, because it provides us the flexibility um, and the functionality to brand and customize it and, and integrate it into whatever sort of solution our team and our customers can dream up. Uh, so we've had the fortune to create some really great DocuSign and Salesforce solutions that help companies onboard employees more efficiently or that help tourism uh, industries or companies like Heli Ski Operations provide a better guest experience. Um, we've enhanced the security of organizations' physical offices. Uh, all these things using DocuSign and Salesforce. So today we're going to talk to you about uh, a use case specifically um, for built for a company called Thinking Capital. And now in the financial services industry, you may know them as uh, Advance It. They have gone through a rebranding. And this is, I, w I wanted to showcase this one because it's one of the most customized and transformational use cases of the Salesforce and DocuSign platforms that we've actually been a part of uh, as an implementation partner. Uh, so it's a really cool use case and, and uh, hopefully you guys find some value. Please uh, include questions in the chat functionality or in the chat feature on the right uh, as we go along and we can try to answer them afterwards. So Thinking Capital provides merchant advances and for small to medium sized businesses across Canada. and. and in addition to that, they also provide term loans for larger businesses, but with more simple or simpler terms. As they're growing, um, you'll see that they're, they're looking to technology more so than um, adding bodies to find ways to scale efficiently while also better serving their customers. 
So since inception in, in 2006, Thinking Capital has supported over 10,000 mom and pops uh, and low complexity businesses across the country, coast to coast here in Canada, with around 400 million in financing. Uh, and as mentioned, they're growing considerably, which translates now to about 300 merchants being supported per month, and that was um, on July 2015. So, and that number is growing and will continue to grow. So Thinking Capital came to traction with a challenge of, of high turnover in their sales call center. And these were the people that were making the calls to businesses across the country trying to secure those advances and term loans. But because of a large amount of data that was needed to be collected during the sales cycle, and because of the qualifying data showing up late, often late in the sales cycle, they were losing about 10 to 15% of their reps per week. So extremely high turnover. And some of these reps were managing up to 300 applications themselves. So high volume, but low closure rate. And what this meant for Thinking Capital was that A, reps were often leaving uh, with loan applicants who may have been later in the sales cycle. And these opportunities uh, were tending to fall through the cracks. It also meant that reps were missing opportunities because there were so many manual processes for collecting their data, uh, whether it was getting a fax or an email or collecting uh, different templates and contracts that were dependent on province or loan amount or anything like that. So this resulted in the reps missing their quotas and ultimately with reps missing quotas, you get high turnover. So thinking capital didn't want to solve this issue by just keeping a, an or adding and ultimately losing bodies uh, in their call center, but they wanted to turn to technology to support a lower turnover and also their scalability. So having committed to the Salesforce platform years ago, uh, it made sense for them to look to Salesforce for a solution. So Traction developed a custom self-service solution that was built on the Force.com platform utilizing Salesforce communities and DocuSign. Uh, from the entire website through the loan application process and document review and further into the account management, everything that you will see today is custom branded and seamlessly integrated into Salesforce. This means responsive design, uh, meaning device agnostic and, and definitely mobile friendly. And it's, as you can see, also integrated with a number of third-party applications um, with the most prominent and largest logo on the screen uh, being DocuSign. So let's take you through the solution, and we're going to do it live here. Um, now, I apologize because there are a number of data entry fields that will need to be completed to see the full value of the demo. Uh, so I've invited one of our technical developers, who is Peter Reimer, who was uh, one of the gentlemen who actually built the solution, and he's going to support me with the demo today. So if you have any very technical questions, although I'm not the right person for that, Peter is and uh, he can support you with that. So Peter would be happy to answer those. Um, so let's, let's take it into, yeah, give it a second while we just switch over our screens here. Yeah, so as you can see on the screen, um, this is the Thinking Capital website, and it is fully customized and built on the force.com platform. So there is no WordPress in here or anything like that. Um, and Peter's taken us down to the, uh, where we can see how much the, uh, or how easy it is to apply for a loan. And, and basically, Peter starts by putting in an amount of his monthly credit card or debit card sales. Now, that's not the amount that he wants for a loan, and now he's adjusting the loan amount here. So he's going to go for, say, 25000 And he's going to set his daily repayment to 16%. Now, what this means, and before he goes and clicks apply now, we want to make sure that so credit card sales or monthly card sales will show is, is actually how Thinking Capital's, uh, Thinking Capital recaptures their loan payments. So by tapping into their device terminal, they can actually get that daily repayment. And you can see that Peter set his daily repayment to 16%. So if he hits apply now, There is a number of, as I said, uh, data input fields here that he's going to run through, so um, I'm going to let him put the data in. But basically, this was all data that needed to be captured manually by the sales rep previously, uh, whether that was over the phone or through email. They, 
Thinking Capital did have an online portal, but it did not have a very good functionality. It was pretty limited in what it could do. Um, so Peter's putting in James Smith, who, who owns Smith's Bakery, and basically James is applying for a loan because he wants to expand his patio uh, to kind of make use of the great sunshine that we're having here in Vancouver um, and attract more customers through the summer months. So he's going to go through and he's going to create an account. Now, what's great about this is, you know, unlike a phone conversation or some of the other solutions out there, Peter can come back or James can come back at any time to uh, re uh, kind of uh, finish off his application or if he needs some information that he doesn't have on hand, he can come back in and log in at any time um, and pick up where he left off. And we'll just give it a second here as we go through the next screen. Now, what's awesome about this process is uh, after Peter's finished putting this information in, we will go directly into a uh, pre-qualified or a, a credit check for the applicant. So if he, if James, uh, James will go through and, and put in his social insurance number, I believe it's on the next page, um, where he will then be immediately qualified or disqualified for, for the loan. And, uh, as you can see here, Peter's entering the payment processor, uh, which will be the, which will uh, help Thinking Capital tap into uh, which actual terminal device uh, they are using. This James is using in his business, so that they can recapture their their loan uh, through the through credit and debit card sales. So this is all information that you'd want to capture uh, for providing a loan, is your business for sale is a, is a good one to see. Make sure that it is not for sale and you're not providing um, a loan to somebody that may not be qualified in that sense. Just a bit more information here. And we will uh, give you a brief view into the back end of the system as to when uh, all, where all this information will, will be going. And so for any of those who are Salesforce admins or who work regularly in Salesforce, you'll be able to see um, exactly kind of the view of how this comes out. Unfortunately, we can't show you uh, Thinking Capital's back end, but we'll give you a sense of um, what the screen and what the information would look like. So here's where Peter puts in his social insurance number uh, for James, and, and this will help with the credit check, uh, which will be done when he clicks Continue. This may take about 10 seconds to complete, um, but we should hopefully, as long as James is qualified and his information is correct, uh, he should be pre-approved or pre-qualified for this loan, um, and then he can go through and start and, and finish um, signing up. So congratulations, great, they've been uh, approved for financing for up to $24,000, um, and James uh, or Peter can go in here now and adjust if you wanted to, the advanced size, depending on the amount that he'd been given. So if he'd been approved for more, uh, he could go through it and, and adjust that. But he's just going to press continue now. So at that point, at the same time, if James had not been successful uh, in being pre-approved, the applicant would actually be reached out to by one of the sales reps or agents who are alerted when someone does not get pre-qualified. Uh, so this is basically a better use for those sales agents in the call center instead of managing a process which is now all self-service online. Peter has a couple other options here, and if he goes to continue, this is where we start to see the DocuSign integration come into play. Now, as I mentioned, Thinking Capital gets repaid through debit and credit card transactions, so this is where um, we need to put in the information to actually connect to the physical terminal in the bakery. So um, Peter enters the merchant ID. And up will pop the data release form. Now this was one of the pieces of information that was often difficult to get back from the applicant, uh, which would often uh, mean that they wouldn't be
be able to, that the loan would kind of stop in its tracks. So uh, within the click of about three or four buttons using DocuSign, uh, they can go through and they can sign the document um, and send it back right away. And easy as that. So a process that once, once took sometimes days or weeks now takes about, what was that, 10 seconds or so. There's a number of uh, different pieces of information that needs to be put in here. Um, like any application, and basically the more information they provide, uh, the, the better they are for setting up their loan and, and um, moving forward. Uh, so Peter's just going to put in a bit more information on the emergency contacts. You can see verify bank account up there. That, will, that would allow them to go through um, and directly deposit the loan into their bank account. Hey, Kevin. And we had a couple of questions come up that are probably pertinent as you're going through the demo here. The the they were is um, the question was is it a hybrid or native Salesforce application and, and kind of in a similar vein. What what Salesforce product is this built on? Yeah, so this is built on Salesforce communities, um, and then basically on top of the communities, we've um, created Visual Force pages, so custom Visual Force pages. Um, that um, all play into the community's feature of Salesforce. So. so everything you see is custom using Visual Force and, and develop, development on the force.com platform, but the back end is communities. Was there another one there, Andrew, that uh, we should be addressing? Sorry, I don't have the chat uh, screen. No, up. that okay. was good, thank Great. you. Awesome. And now, once all the information has been put in, um, you can see that they will now get the supporting documents. And this is really where the cool bit of DocuSign comes into play. Uh, what's really cool about this, so if, if Peter clicks on Sign Agreement, this is the culmination of all the data that's been input into the previous screen. So the more data collected, the more the contract is filled out. And uh, we skipped a few of the data entry points, um, but you can see that all the information, uh, you know, his social insurance number, uh, the, all the information about the business is all included in there, ownership percentage and everything. Um, and what's really cool about this one is that we've loaded in about 40 templates into the back end of DocuSign. And depending on the data entered in the previous screens, DocuSign will dynamically pull the right content in the right language. So as an example, if you're in Quebec, you may have a different, uh, you may have different requirements uh, than in BC, or if your loan is above $100,000, there may be differences than a smaller loan. So being able to dynamically generate that template is a, is a significant time saver for customers and also for the reps. Instead of having to chase down and um, you know, manage 40 different templates based on the pre-qualifications, um, it, it's a, it was a huge efficiency in the process. And we didn't have a, um, a field for language, but if we did have a field for language, they could choose English or French, and this also supports uh, the contracts and would come up uh, in the language that they've chosen, so it does recognize that as well. Great. So James has now completed and signed his agreement. Uh, he, his loan will uh, you can see the application process is 90% finished, uh, and then if Peter hits continue, then they'll go through, and um, any other documents that needed to be signed were there, and he's now 100% finished. So this shows the front end of the of the application, and that's that's the end of the live demo. So just give me two seconds while I transition. back to here. And so going forward from here, now this is the sales rep experience. And unfortunately, I can't give you more of an insight than this. But basically, all that information that was drawn in from those forms is now presented clearly in the in the sales rep experience or in, in the lead screen. So each applicant, whether successful or not, comes into Salesforce and is treated like a lead by the sales agents. And if they needed, need to work on them and support the cycle, they can, they can do so by seeing all the information that's passed through from the self-service community. They can then report and, and action on that data 
as necessary. Now this is the second half of the community and this is being delivered in the next couple weeks. Um, but this is the account management component. The purpose of this one is, is once the applicant has secured their loan, they can continue to engage with Thinking Capital to manage their repayment schedule, as well as find out about additional funding opportunities that may be available to them. So additional features included in here uh, are aggregated reviews, and that's using one of the integrations with Suite IQ, uh, which you can see on the right side there. Um, pull, this pulls all the reviews from online uh, at, of your business and aggregates them into a, a master score as well as uh, refer another business, and you can see that down on the bottom right. And ultimately, what this is doing is just contributing to higher engagement and hopefully an increase in, in repeat uh, funding. So all in all, this, this loan application process has been great for Thinking Capital, and, and they've been able to take uh, manual processes that once upon a time took days to complete, and they brought it down to about a 20 to 30 minute self-service process. This, this important, the important part here uh, being self-service. Now, 80% of the loans are pre-approved without manual intervention, meaning reps can spend more time supporting their customers and with things that matter mainly, as well as helping to convert those more difficult applications into secured loans. All in all, using this thinking capital has been able to scale the number of customers without necessarily scaling the number of employees and using technology and specifically Salesforce and, and DocuSign uh, to do so. That is the end of the demo. Um, I do see, I just want to check the chat screen here. Uh, Andrew, if you could go through a couple of the questions. Oh, sure. Hey, everybody. So first, first of all, just as a quick reminder, if you have questions that you want to you wanna ask Kevin and his team or me, and I'm also joined actually by Jay Collins, who is a, uh, a sales executive here in our financial services vertical, so also an expert in the area, uh, please type them in the chat window, and we will get to them as quickly as we can. Um, the first question, actually, Kevin, I think it's probably for you. Is is there the is there when you were when you were came up when you were showing the DocuSign form? The question was, is there or what kind of rules engine is there sitting behind that to help you pick the form and fill out the data? Yeah, good question. Um, so basically, we have an engine built within Salesforce that um, matches on criteria um, for those specific contract blocks to be uh, displayed. Um, so we've built out that engine specific for Thinking Capital, but um, very easy to change that down the road. So the engine is uh, available to update. Got it. Good. Thank you. Um, so uh, a question, and, and maybe this is for Jay, although I'm sure, Kevin, you can answer this as well. You you did the signing experience, and, and all the forms are filled out. Does it force people to fill out all the fields? Kevin, I'll let you answer that one. I'm not sure. And sorry, can you can you repeat that, Andrew? The 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 question was, Kevin, is if if as you're filling out the forms as part of the DocuSign application or when you're doing that form, what happens if the user doesn't fill out all of the fields? So so they will be uh, not roadblocked until they filled out all the necessary required information. So uh, we were diligent enough to know which ones to fill out today, but. If they're filling out and they don't know some of the information, they can log back in at another point once they've secured that information, but they do need to have all the required fields to go through and be pre-qualified as well as be able to fill out all the um, DocuSign components and secure the loan. Got it. Thanks, Kevin. So another question is, does, does this solution uh, communicate with some of the, the different bureaus like um, transportation? TransUnion, the TransUnion bros. Uh, yes, it, it could. So it's basically set up to accommodate for any different type of industry. Um, so yeah, totally capable to do that. 
Got it. What, where does the, another question, where does the data reside, the document, and, and does the applicant get a copy of that document after it's completed? Totally. So all the data that has been filled out um, throughout the whole process is stored into records of Salesforce. From there, we query and we pull into the template. Um, so all that data is stored there. Once the, the form is complete, it does store on their account record. Um, so anytime the, the sales rep needs to go in and, and, and retrieve that, they can. It's just stored under their specific account record for that specific version. Got it. Thank you. Uh, another question here. And this might be a, a, another flavor of the first one, but does Thinking Capital query other business services to check on the history of a business via web services or other methods? So within that pre-qualification process, I'm not 100% sure what, which uh, solution they've gone with, but it, it is a um, basically on-the-spot approval process. So they do query um, a number of different components. What specifically those components are to create that um, pre-qualification, I'm not 100% sure. It's, it's based on what information they used as in their sales rep system beforehand. Got it, okay. Great, thanks, Kevin. Another question, can you send a form to multiple signers and have, have users sign in a specific order? Good question. Um, yes. So currently, that is uh, actually set up for this uh, for this use case. So the first signer is going to be the one within the portal. So they're going to be like the, the person that owns most of the company. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, but there is a um, ownership percentage field within the, the gating process. What I filled out. Um, if you were to do say 50% and 50% um, of the uh, of the business owned, um, what would happen is it would ask me to fill out my signature blocks on the application first. And then say Kevin was the, the other uh, other owner, which uh, he owns 50% of the company. He will get an email right after I fill out and complete my document for him to sign. So there is that uh, um, that uh, functionality embedded within this process. It actually um, we have we have the ability to do it for three signers. So if three people in the company will email those um, those two people after the first person initially signs. Jay, did you have anything to add on that, maybe for DocuSign more generally? Yeah, I mean, more specifically for DocuSign, there's a lot of different options. But, of course, uh, even DocuSign out of the box is going to have that same type of, of option for, for routing documents. Um, so, generally speaking, if you're sending from a console, it's going to be based on the template, uh, just the same as you're seeing here, which is a little more integrated. Uh, but that's one of the big value adds of DocuSign is to be able to have multiple centers collaborate on that same document. Great, thanks, Jay. You bet. I have another question here about mobile and asking if this ad, the, the, the question is, can the applicant you complete this process from a mobile device? So the answer is an authoritative 100% yes. Um, Everything that was built, uh, including the website and the application process, is all 100% responsive. So um, they can start on their machine, or they can start on their laptop, they can uh, finish on their tablet or on their phone or whatever else they'd like to do. It's all very nicely laid out and, and, and built, so very easy to uh, sign on any device. Got it. Okay. So uh, one more, one more question here. Within the within the the solution, are all the the typical DocuSign features available? So document visibility, voiding, etc. Yep, totally. Um, everything um, you'd have normally within DocuSign is uh, available within. Uh, um, the functionality that we provided. So, um, yes. Jay, could you comment really quickly? I, I know that in the, in the introduction, we we just gave a high-level overview of DocuSign, the company, but the could you give a short intro to what some of those standard features are for DocuSign, a standalone product? Uh, product features uh, include, uh, you know, as we mentioned, um, having the ability to build out a complex workflow within a template. 
of course, um, you know, having the ability to authenticate through several different means um, via email, access code, or even as high as you know, LexisNexis with an ID check in place. So, um, yeah, being able to, to validate who the signers are and be able to, as you know, already mentioned, sign documents on, on any mobile device or any web-enabled device, um, and of course, you know, have that collaboration tool to be able to uh, get documents out, more importantly, get them back, but also have that management piece on the back end. So anyone who's familiar with DocuSign has kind of seen the console dashboard, uh, knows that there's a lot of tools there to be able to, to better track the documents that are out for signature. Uh, so things like a dashboard that allow you to quickly see what documents are out for signature, what's been viewed, um, be able to get a detailed look at what happened to that document step by step can help with follow up. Uh, if there's multiple signers, of course, that's a nice way to, to find out where that document is being stalled and oftentimes be able to affect the movement of that document by getting a, a closer look. Um, on the management side, there's also really nice tools to be able to have an understanding for what the team's doing um, on a, during a period of time. So, for example, uh, we, you could have a report run that reports every week, every month, every quarter, um, but what you're going to do is be able to identify a set number of metrics that are important to you to better understand how the business is being run. Of course, you know, these metrics can include you know, what's been sent, what's been signed, what's been received. Uh, that can be segmented by users, uh, but this way you can actually rely on that report to come to your inbox and be able to get a, um, a check on, on what's happened with your DocuSign account during a period of time. I think those are really kind of the, the big highlights there. Yeah, thank you very much, Jay. You bet. One more question here. I think we have time for one more question. And so we've seen today, Kevin, a an, an example for a loan application process. And actually, I guess probably this question is both for you, Kevin, and for you, Jay. What other uh, within within Salesforce and DocuSign? What other powerful integrations and use cases have you seen out in the marketplace? Um, well, I mean, one of the other really cool solutions, there's, there's been a lot of uh, integrations with communities lately, and I think that's a growing trend as communities becomes more and more, um, uh, as Salesforce becomes uh, more customer-facing, more and more communities are going to be developing where uh, clients or, or consumers or customers are engaged with the brand within the community and, and often need to sign um, or fill out forms or anything like that. So a, a big one that we've seen is HR and onboarding um, and, you know, hiring, hiring people, uh, whether it's through a community uh, and the manual processes that often go along with um, hiring a large number of people at one time. So using DocuSign and Salesforce, we've developed some pretty cool um, use cases that have allowed companies to bring people on fast, um, all built within Salesforce and, and basically take that self-service model and put it out to the customer or to the prospect or whoever it is, a candidate, to put the onus on them to fill out all the information and kind of keep their application going forward instead of having it all be in the back end managed, uh, you know, in a very difficult situation. Jay, what about from your end with DocuSign as a standalone solution? Yeah, you know, I think the possibilities with, with Salesforce just open up a lot more management tools. You know, what I see from my perspective working with credit unions and banks and other lending organizations, uh, it's just having the ability to interface that, that CRM system with stuff that they're doing, whether it's a rep sending out a, a document to a member or a customer, or it's someone on their website who's just kind of trying to apply uh, to be a customer um, of that particular institution, to be able to have that system um, take information from the consumer on the website, um, have it filter into the Salesforce record, um, and then be able to have triggers to be able to send out the next step, whether that's to have a rep call that individual or maybe to, uh, to automatically send out a DocuSign document. Um, the, the, the value there is just to, to have that collaboration to be able to avoid um, manual rekeying of information. That greatly cuts down on administrative time, and our customers are able to take that time and kind of redirect it in a more constructive way. Uh, so I think that yeah, just having those systems speak together um, help, helps to reduce the rekeying of information. Of course, no one wants to print a document out and then have to type it into a, a, a digital system. And also from like a technical standpoint, like the, the workflow engine that we built for, say, this specific case, use case or the 
um, the HR onboarding one. Um, it's basically power enough to, powerful enough to do um, basically anything you can dream up. Um, so any different uh, specific use, use case that it, it could accommodate for. So um, these are just a couple that, uh, that were brought up um, during discussions with the client, but um, basically anything what you can dream is, is, is usually possible with that. With the Great. Thank you very much. So that's all the time we have for questions today. So, so first off, I want to thank everybody for, for joining us. We will make a recording of this webinar available for you, so please stay tuned. Uh, last, just want to make one announcement. If you're coming to Dreamforce, we'd love to see you. Both Traction on Demand and DocuSign will be there. Look us up, come out and visit us, and say hello. Again, thanks very much Sorry. for joining. Hold on. Sorry, just before we go, Andrew, I just wanted to uh, – one more thing. If you are coming to Dreamforce, and this is something that we are um, only putting out to a few um, – not well, it's not a – it's quite an exclusive opportunity, but for anybody looking to learn more about developing uh, the strategies around a multi-Salesforce org environment, um, so if you have multi-orgs, uh, we'll be hosting an exclusive event on Tuesday at Dreamforce. So if you are interested in learning more about – kind of how to manage that those systems, please reach out to me. Thanks, everybody, very much for uh, your time today, and I hope this was valuable for everybody on the call. Thank you. Thank you.